Let's now see how to find the slope of a curve given in polar coordinates by the equation r equals f of theta. Recall that we can also think of this as a parameterized curve in Cartesian coordinates given by the equations x equals f of theta cosine theta and y equals f of theta sine theta. And the slope is dy dx which, as we saw by the chain rule, can be rewritten as dy d theta over dx d theta. And so by the above equations, this is d d theta of f of theta sine theta divided by d d theta of f of theta cosine theta. And you can further expand this, but there's no point in trying to memorize the resulting formula. Just remember that when you want to find the slope, just write x and y as functions of theta and calculate dy d theta over dx d theta. Let's do an example. So let's calculate the slope of the curve r equals 1 minus 2 cosine theta at theta equals pi over 2. So let's first write x and y in terms of theta. So x is r, which is 1 minus 2 cosine theta times cosine theta, and y equals r sine theta, so that's 1 minus 2 cosine theta sine theta. And we know that the slope is dy d theta over dx d theta, so that's d d theta of y, which is 1 minus 2 cosine theta sine theta, divided by d d theta of x, which is 1 minus 2 cosine theta cosine theta. So on top here, by the product rule, I have 2 sine theta times sine theta plus 1 minus 2 cosine theta times cosine theta divided by, on the bottom, by the product rule again, I have 2 sine theta times uh, cosine theta plus 1 minus 2 cosine theta times minus sine theta. So if I expand this out, I get 2 sine squared theta plus cosine theta minus 2 cosine squared theta divided by 2 sine theta cosine theta minus sine theta plus another 2 sine theta cosine theta. So let's turn this into a 4. Okay. Now I want to plug in theta equals pi over 2. So when theta equals pi over 2, cosine is 0 and sine is 1. So I can cross out everything that has a cosine in it. And I just get 2 over minus 1. So the final answer is minus 2. We'll see more about this curve a little later. I now want to explain how to find the area which is, so to speak, under the polar curve r equals f of theta as theta goes from alpha to beta. And to avoid confusion with negative values of r, I'm going to assume that f is always greater than or equal to zero. So what I mean by under the curve is the following. So in the xy plane, we look at the region which is bounded by the ray where theta equals alpha and r is greater than or equal to zero, the ray where theta equals beta and r is greater than or equal to zero, and the curve r equals f of theta. So I want to find the area of this enclosed region. Now the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to approximate the region by a bunch of thin pi slices. 
So sort of analogously to approximating the region under a graph by a bunch of skinny rectangles. So I have a bunch of pie slices, and the area of my region is the limit as the widths of these pie slices go to zero. Let's call that width delta theta of the sum of the areas of these pie slices. Now what's the area of a pie slice? So suppose I have a little slice here, or a little wedge of a circle, where the angle is delta theta and the radius is r. So this is a little piece of a circle. So what's the area of this? So the area of this slice, or wedge, is r squared times delta theta over 2. Why is that? Well, suppose delta theta were equal to 2 pi. Then we would get the entire circle of radius r, and the area enclosed is pi r squared. So if delta theta is 2 pi, I have to divide by 2 to get pi here, and then multiply by r squared. But then this should be a linear function of theta, uh, of delta theta, sorry. So this is some constant times delta theta when r is fixed, and so we see that that constant has to be r squared over 2. Okay, so we get that the area of the region we care about is the limit as delta theta goes to zero of the sum of r squared delta theta over two, where r is evaluated at some sample point on our theta interval of length delta theta. And in the limit, this becomes the integral from alpha to beta of r squared over 2 d theta. Or in terms of our original function f, we could equivalently write this as the integral of f of theta squared over 2 d theta. Okay, so this is the formula for the area in polar coordinates, and we'll see some interesting examples of this in the next lecture segment.